Greetings, welcome back to Black Bear News, where everything is connected and getting connected on Rockfin for the people on Rockfin. We got somebody watching on Rockfin, and we are live on Rockfin, and hopefully more people will join Black Bear News on Rockfin. What's going on, guys? The early chatters are in. <clears throat> it's a little bit of an early show today, so it usually takes people a little while to get onto the stream and into the chat. Um, or receive knowledge that is a little earlier today. Kiro Heiss, you guessed correctly. Yes, today is the Sunday. Um, what's going on? Al MF, Nazma Nabs, Nazma Nabs, Poppy Davis, Raza, what's going on? G Demarest, it's cold. Nazma Nabs, fi finally, where you are? <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll just call you Naz. Uh, it is actually fairly warm here. It's already touching 80 degrees at 10 a.m. in the morning. So we're going to have a little like a little mid-November um, warm up for a couple days. You got beer, G. Demarest. All right. Sunday morning, good time for the beer. You can't chat on Rockfin? That's not true. If you say something, I can see you. Although I, I'm not watching the chat on Rockfin, so, you know, you're probably right. There's a lot more chatters here on YouTube. <clears throat> but if you want to say hello on Rockfin, I would appreciate it. Yeah, I don't, I'm not set up to watch both screens at the same time, and maybe, maybe I can fix that in the future. But I have enough to manage just making sure that things aren't going off the rails on YouTube. Cold rainstorms in Michigan, says Clayton Halligan. Duty Truett, Snake, Snake1974. Urban Hermit, what's going on? Gene, what's going on? Gritty Chops. North and South are cooking. 40 Fahrenheit in Vancouver. Okay. A balmy 40 Fahrenheit. There you go. No, Clay. Well, people were talking about that yesterday. Paul Beck was debating Dave, Dane Wigington. <clears throat> and I said I was going to watch it, but I didn't watch it yesterday. Dang it if I shouldn't send myself a reminder to watch it. I've got too many things to watch. This is a problem. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you know, I, I'd have to spend the next couple of days just straight watching all the recommendations and shows and things I'm supposed to be looking at. And I don't even have a couple hours. Uh, so if I can sneak in whatever amount, I don't know how long that video is. If I can sneak in a couple minutes, I'll watch that Paul Beckwith and Dane Wigington. I heard it was not so good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm. Um, but I'm interested in that because, uh, look, I, I feel like Dane Wigington is doing something that's real to him. He's doing work and speaking about things that are concerning and, and pressing to him. I, I don't agree with some of the things he says, some of the, some of the things that he says, I think that there's validity for. And I think that about a lot of people, right? It's not, I don't have 100% agreement with everybody. That doesn't mean that that invalidates them or that I don't find that their information helpful or necessary or, <clears throat> right? And I, I've actually had questions. Paul Beckwith did a video about chemtrails that I thought was absolute shite. I mean, it was just, I know he's supposed to be the engineer and the scientist and all, but I was like, dude, what are you talking about? He was just saying all kinds of stuff that just didn't make any kind of sense. And so I was like, 
Okay. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. You know, I, I just, I'm not in 100% agreement with everything that everybody has to say. That's just how I operate, <clears throat> you know. But I like, I, the thing is, is I appreciate a lot of voices. You know, even if there are some things that I disagree with, I, you know, I appreciate all the voices. I appreciate Guy McPherson. I appreciate Dane Wigington. I appreciate Roger Hallam. I appreciate Greta Thunberg. I appreciate um, people, all everyone doing climate change channels and climate aware channels, environmental coffee house and Hambone and every, you know, I appreciate everybody pitching in and kind of lending their shoulder to the, to the stone, pushing the stone up the hill perpetually like Sisyphus. <laughs> okay. Okay. Nasba Nabs. I'll take your word for it. Um, uh, Basil Peterson, 50 to 60 mile per hour wind gusts here, uh, with derecho, derecho like storm on the way. Oh no. Be careful. <clears throat> G. Demarest, truth is not about agreement. It just is. And yeah, that was an interesting part of the early chats. I was kind of hanging out with y'all a little while ago. Kind of a good discussion, a banding about of ideas about what is truth or objectivity or bias or non-bias. But, you know, the truth is the, the truth. It's ob observable by many angles, right? So that's... I like evidence that just is, right? That's why, you know, the evidence that the Arctic is melting just is. It's why climate denialism is such a difficult, you know, uh, task, if, you're, if that's your task, climate, climate denialism. Because you just got to make shit up <laughs> about, you know, if you're, if you're talking about the Earth is going into a cooling period. You know, you really got to try, you got to, you got to create a whole mirage of things going on and just cherry pick away. But if you just are looking at, you know, if you just mosey on over to the Arctic and just take a look at what's going on every single year or look at the glaciers in the Himalayas or, you know, look at the, um, the glaciers in France, you know, the glaciers in Alaska, the sea ice that's missing, gone, and barely comes back. You know, it's hard, you know, you just really can't get around that observable fact, that observable evidence. G. Demarest, we just had a king tide, sandbags everywhere. There you go. There's another observable fact. Seas aren't rising, however, several times a year in Miami, they have to, they have the streets flooded just from a high tide, king tide. G. Demers, you're in Vancouver, right? Am I, am I guessing right? I think you said you were in British Columbia or Vancouver. And there you go. In Hawaii, they have king tides that are wa washing out roads and washing out um, coastal areas in Hawaii from king tides. It's, happen it's, more, it's happening more and more often, and that is just a sign that of what? It's just very obvious. It's very difficult to deny. So obvious a child could, could see it. That the, the, the sea levels are rising. Um, it's not a it's not a once in a while thing. It's a all the time. It's a fairly common occurrence thing now. And so let's move into um, let's move into hurricane hurricane common occurrence things. Right. Speaking of common occurrence things, how long until you know? The people of the planet, I mean, uh, you know, there are quite a few people of the planet that have woken up to the, the idea, the fact. It's not an idea. Not an opinion. It's a fact, a fact that climate change is getting worse, becoming stronger, 
uh, moving much faster than expected. I, this, this is just an observable fact. <laughs> if you just look at the number of storms, the severity of storms, the amount of damage that uh, successive, relentless uh, climate disasters are taking on the planet or having on the planet, right? We have this, uh, uh, every single year now, they're just st there's storm after storm after storm and cyclone after cyclone after cyclone, hurricane after hurricane after hurricane. And here we have, you know, the record setting iota <clears throat> turning into a hurricane about to hit Central America, which they just had a hurricane last week, right? They're, they're still reeling. There's flooding in Jamaica. There's, there's flooding all over uh, Honduras. Uh, I believe Guatemala got hit fairly hard as well. Um, Miami got hit very hard. South Florida got hit very hard. Carolinas got hit very hard from one, just one storm. And here comes another one. And how many storms have hit Louisiana? Uh, right? Louisiana, a uh, certain section of Louisiana is hit by, what, three or four tropical storms slash hurricanes this year? And they don't even have time to rebuild their infrastructure. Are you guys seeing this at all? I don't know. doesn't look like anything's happening. Uh, Iota reaches hurricane strength. Hopefully now you're seeing it. I don't know. Iota reaches hurricane strength and is forecast to hit storm ravaged Central America as a major storm. <clears throat> and this is from today. The storm known as Iota rapidly strengthened into a hurricane early Sunday isn't expected to slam into storm ravaged Central America in the coming days. <clears throat> Iota is forecast to make landfall as a Category 4 with sustained winds of at least 130 mile per hour late Monday night or early Tuesday. It will be the second major hurricane to hit the region in the past two weeks. On November 3rd, Hurricane Asa made landfall as a Category 4 storm, causing landslides and flooding that left scores of people dead or missing. Iota, which formed Friday at sea, was centered in the Caribbean about 335 miles southeast, southeast of Nicaragua-Honduras border with maximum sustained winds of 90 miles per hour as of 10 a.m. Eastern Time Sunday. It is forecast to continue to rapidly strengthen over the next 24 hours. Iota, the 13th hurricane of the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season, is expected to continue heading west and make landfall somewhere in Central America, potentially near the Honduras-Nicaragua border by late Monday or early Tuesday. <clears throat> um, la uh, lastly, parts of those two countries could receive uh, torrential rain totals of two to three feet along with a life-threatening storm surge of 10 to 15 feet. Um, sorry, let me, let me go back to this. I'm still reading. It's going on. Um, so could affect Honduras, northern Nicaragua, eastern Guatemala, southern Belize through Thursday, Costa Rica, Panama, northern Colombia. Could receive four to eight inches of rain through Thursday. Colombia's government has issued a hurricane warning for the island of Providencia, and the island of San Andres is under both a hurricane watch and tropical storm warning. <clears throat> and it continues on. Uh, quite a few people have been posting and talking about... Hey. No, you don't. Quite a few people... have been talking and posting about the Just Have a Think, the latest video from Just Have a Think about methane release, and it looks not good. <laughs> it looks not good. Um, always doing good videos from Just Have a Think. I think here's uh, something I wanted to play. Hold on. various reasons 
not least the record Siberian heatwave. Uh, just a few seconds from this, if I can get this going, if I can get it going, nope, always, always not getting it going. Hold on a second, guys. We call the Laptev Sea, just off the coast of Siberia, was experiencing abnormally high temperatures, well above freezing points, and those high temperatures were inhibiting the formation of new ice. But that wasn't all they discovered. As they went deeper and deeper below the surface, down to depths of about 350 metres, they ran into huge plumes of bubbles rising up from the seabed. Those bubbles were methane gas escaping from melting permafrost, and the concentrations were found to be 400 times higher than had previously been expected. And that is a problem. Um, I don't know if you guys could see that. I don't think you could, but I, I think you could hear it. <clears throat> Anyways, I apologize for the difficulties, technical difficulties, but, uh, uh, so yes, they, you know, he's just kind of talking about the news of the plumes <coughs> of the methane, uh, that they were finding. Sorry about the, sorry about the loudness of the. Whew, okay, uh, sorry about the loudness. Talking about the plumes of methane that um, have been bubbling up, seen bubbling up, observed bubbling up, and methane in some areas being 400 times. 400 times the background level. That, you know, nothing to, nothing to worry about here. He obviously has um, Yeah, I, I think many people enjoy his videos. Yes, he's also hope hope amiss hop mystic hope a mystic. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he gives a very um, he gives a very studious, um, you know, low key. Um, you know, very professorial, professor, professorial, professorial to take on, um, you know, the issues around climate change. He does tend towards the hope, tech, ho, tech hopium, I guess, or tech utopianism, kind of, maybe. I don't, I don't know, whatever. I mean, his videos are very well done. Uh, he got, you know, at the end of this particular video, he said, you know, well, let's said something, of, you know, about Biden, you know, uh, being of cooler mind and, and, and open to, <laughs> open to, uh, you know, open to all ideas on the table or something like that. Something about that. Uh, very optimistic about a Joe Biden presidency. It seems, or maybe just whatever. Um, yeah, I, you know, my, my only, my one problem with the just have a think thing is that, uh, is, you know, it's all very like, well, the study says this and we don't know that. And when, you know, it's kind of, it's, you know, very informative, very well done, very helpful, very, you know, it, it is, he's not causing disinformation, although he did have a response to planet of the humans that I thought was interesting. So yes, kind of on the tech utopian side. So if you can fault him for anything, it probably would be that. <clears throat> so, um, eh, you know, I don't, I don't know if I need, you know, it's fine. I, I want to actually go through and do like a, re a, a response video to one of his videos. Um, he did a, he did a video around, Somebody sent me a video about small modular reactors that he did, which I thought was very interesting. But what I would like to do is do an entire video of, I'm going to play snippets of that video and kind of talk about what he's saying. Um, but whatever. Yes, Andy the Gardener, people generally move in the doom direction as they learn more. Yes. And... Um, yeah, I feel like I feel like uh, 
you know, he get, he gives the straight skinny that guy, uh, although somewhat, you know, he kind of, uh, you know, veers away from doom, <laughs> veers people away from the doom uh, scenario, whatever. Anyways, <clears throat> let's move on. Uh, this from uh, our very own TCR, 1979 to 2000 baseline. Baseline, 1979, <laughs> right? So uh, the shifting, the the world of the shifting baselines, I think, is very important. It's very important. This news, where are we at? Where's the baseline? What's the actual temperature? Again, this is a. Um, You know, this this is in line with trying to understand what the actual evidence, what's the actual evidence, what's the observable reality on which we can base educated uh, opinions on, um, well-informed stances ar around what is really going on. And this this baseline, the, ba the, the baseline or the shifting baseline argument... <clears throat> is a thing I think that is really important. It's a tool. So on one side, on one hand, it's a tool used to misinform people about how bad things are, about where we are truly are at in the realm of climate change. Uh, and, I, you know, and that misinformation can fly pretty, pretty thick sometimes. Um, but there are a lot of opinions. I mean, there are a myriad of opinions around where we're actually at, you know, as far as a baseline. Is it, uh, is it 1750? Is it 1880? Is it 1980? Is it 1950? Is it 1920? Is it 1680? Is it, I was the, ba I don't know. Is it 2000? <laughs> Help. What's the baseline and what's the actual temperature? What, how, what are we, where are we actually at? So many opinions ranging from Sam Carana to Michael Mann to whoever, to NASA, to NOAA. It's really hard to get a handle on what is the actual temperature of the planet. And I'm, I, I don't know that I'm going to help you right this second. I would, maybe that's another, another really good video possibly for, for myself or, you know, throwing that out there for just have a think. Maybe, maybe he could actually figure out what what's the actual temperature of the planet um, in conjunction to w whatever the normal temperature should be. What's or what's the actual baseline? Can somebody <clears throat> give us a clue? <laughs> Help. So here's here's according to the 1979-2000 baseline, world point nine. All right, so. Of course, 79, laughable baseline. Northern Hemisphere, 1.4. So, oh, oh, 1.5 is the guardrail, which we cannot cross. Um, if we stop all emissions now, but wait, the Northern Hemisphere is actually already almost pretty much 1.5. We'll just call it 1.5, pretty dang close. And that's just from 40 years ago, right? So that's just a, that's just a baseline you know, that's an easy old, like, well, you know, pretty recently, one point. So where are we at if we want to go all the way back in the Wayback Machine? What's the, where is the Northern Hemisphere really at? Arctic, 4.4. Yikes. That's the one that should really be concerning. <laughs> really be concerning. Because uh, we have these methane hydrates, this permafrost this Arctic ice that is melting and there are, you know, they look how hot it up. They are Four four C, you know, an entire planet of four C is, um, a dy dystopian level death and destruction. And guess what's happening already in just, you know, a corner of the planet, the corner of the round planet, the tropics point four. <clears throat> so they're heating up, but not as fast, but you know, of course, more humidity makes for hotter temperatures or hotter fields. Uh, Southern Hemisphere, 0.3, not too, not too shabby. 
But oh, Antarctic, ouch. Ooh, ah. <clears throat> Yikes. 2.6 is nothing to nothing to squint at. Um, you gotta hold your eyes wide open there and go 2.6 is hot as blazes. Blazing hot. Uh so how long before the entire southern hemisphere, you know, st- the Anar- how long before the Antarctic starts to match the Arctic and in the northern hemisphere to match the southern hemisphere, the, the world, tropics, the world. Um, so this is one of the things I wanted to talk about yesterday that I kind of ran out of time for. Again, just more blatant lying and misinformation from, you know, quote unquote, climate scientists. <laughs> And if you wonder why, you know, look, you wonder why there are climate denialists out there. You wonder why people think everything's a conspiracy theory. You wonder why people can, no, don't trust the media, don't trust anything that anybody in official position say to them. It's because of bullshit like this. Uh, climate scientists here, Zeke Hosfather. Stuff like this is dangerously inaccurate. So he's talking about how, you know, the article we read the other day about how we're going to have to do is carbon capture. And I, there's, I'm going to have a whole discussion on carbon capture, more carbon capture discussion tomorrow, guys. I'm running out of time in this live stream for the big, you know, a deep dive into carbon capture. But I want to get there. He's talking about, you know, the passing the point of no return or passing the tipping points. And he says, he says, this climate scientist, if we stop emissions tomorrow, tomorrow, okay, the earth will remain around 1.2 C above pre-industrial temps. Oh, that's not too bad. The earth, the whole earth, (laughs) the entire earth. We're already above 1.2 C in the Northern Hemisphere, in the Arctic, in the Antarctic. We're already above the, we already blew past that guy, old Zeke boy. Um, so, and he's going to say remain, the earth will remain. So he's, he's just a, a climate scientist should know better. Anybody who knows anything about climate science, science, uh, hell, you know, I'm just a, I'm just a layman. I'm just a, you know, I'm just a YouTube watcher, <laughs> layman <clears throat> in my garage who, who's trying to put things together. Even I know that this is a, a really, this is entirely untrue, right? Because if we stopped, we know that if we stopped emissions tomorrow, that car, you know, the uh, PPM of CO2 is going to keep rising. We know that there's already methane being released. We know that the permafrost is already, we know that things have already kicked in. Many, many things have already kicked in that are going to cause the temperature of the planet to continue to rise. He, he's, he's, this, this man is a climate denialist or a science denier. He's denying just basic climate science that a lot of people already understand. And I don't understand why he's saying this. Why are you saying, are you saying this to make people feel better? Are you saying this because if you don't say, speak the truth about it, do you think you're going to depress people or, you know, deflate the children, um, scare the children or scare yourself? Zeke looks like new, new father, Haas, new father, um, I don't, I don't understand why you're saying this. <laughs> I just, I just, this is mind boggling to me. This straight out lie. I told, and I told him basically. And I don't know where he's getting this. He's, he goes on to tweet a wide range of studies, including the latest state of the art earth system models all show there isn't much additional warming in the pipeline. If emissions go to zero. Saying it's too late makes folks give up hope. So that's, I think, why he's saying this. The warming we get is still up to us. 
So big, big fat dose of hopium, unscientific hopium. Uh, because there's a lag in heating, and he should know this. I don't know. I, maybe I can go deeper. And I now he's linked this article, and I really don't have time to go deep into this article. But maybe I can um, bring this up another day, or take we can take another deep dive into this article. Um, I don't. I don't understand. You know, there's there's we've already released emissions in the atmosphere that are going to cause further heating. So this is just. This is a lot of misinformation. I'm I'm very very stunned by that a climate scientist would say this. Uh, and again, this is this causes, this doesn't cause you know putting out misinformation in the hopes that you create this like alternate reality for people in their minds. You know, like uh, Hillary Clinton is way ahead and Trump can never win. He'll never win. She's got this. Biden is way ahead. Trump will never, you know, he's got this. Trump is, you know, going down. He's going down. Um, yeah, you know, for the, uh, what we can see, Biden won the election, but it wasn't, it was pretty dang close, right? For, there was a, there were, a, there were, a, um, it was by no, no means a trouncing or a Trump, or trumping, which they were trying to, you know, recreate reality around that. But I mean, there, you know, Anyways, I, I don't want to go down that road, but I'm just saying, like, you create this alternate reality in hopes that, of giving people this false sense of hope, or, or you know, if you create this, I, you know, I don't know. M hey, uh, what, what's the, what's the phrase? Uh, fake it till you make it. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe this is how we survive or save the planet is we just create an alternate reality for us, ourselves. We just act as if. We're going to save the planet and everything's going to be fine. And then, I don't know, maybe it'll work. I, I don't know. I'm just putting on, I'm taking off my climate scientist hat and I'm putting on my um, motivational speaker hat. You know, I'm putting on my spiritual guru hat. <clears throat> you know, if you just act as if everything's going to be fine. But the thing is, is that you run into the, you run into the, <laughs> The likelihood that you may slam into a brick wall of real reality. The brick wall of reality. Oh, shit. Trump won. Our polls were way off. <laughs> oh, shit. That was close. You know, there was a moment there when it, when it looked like maybe Biden would lose. Our polls were way off. Uh, you know, so it's like, you know. Act as if or fake it till you make it at your own peril. Um, you know, there's, there's, um, I, you know, there, there, I think there's a certain amount of, of uh, maybe <clears throat> forceful optimism that might be helpful in, in trying to do good things for yourself or the planet. Or the, but, you know, then there's also reality. But I just, I really, I find that disturbing that, that this supposed climate scientist would tweet. I also told him to go turn in his, go turn in, in his degree immediately. <laughs> because if you're going to say stuff like that, you're, you're not, I mean, you should just be not, not allowed to, you know, claim, <clears throat> degreed scientist of any sort or whatever if you're gonna if you're gonna start talking about reality as if it it isn't um but stuff like that makes people distrust the information they're getting you know it make it turns people into conspiracy theorists it turns people into i don't trust anything that anybody is saying <clears throat> and there's good reason to not trust anything that anybody's saying because you, you know there's plenty of misinformation being put out there but it just makes the situation wor worse when nobody can tell what reality is, is or isn't. I'm, one more thing I want to just, um, before I leave you all, I just want to quickly uh, reference Kevin Hester 
<clears throat> he has an article. This is a, a few years old. Baseline, baseline temperature dishonesty at the edge of extinction. <clears throat> and yeah, I don't know what this is like. The you know the polls, the the U.S. national election polls of the last few elections. You know, a certain amount of dishonesty going on and trying to make people feel like it's fine, everything's fine. Let's move the baseline up to 2010, guys. We're only a 0.3 or 0.5 above. The 2010 baseline, we got this. We're good. As we get closer to the collapse of the biosphere, I've been noticing a huge distortion, if not outright lying, in the use of baseline figures for planetary temperature increase that humans have caused with our crack-like and sadly terminal addi addiction to carbon. Uh, the Industrial Revolution, which took place from the 18th to, to the 19th centuries, was a period during which predominantly agrarian rural societies in Europe and America became industrial and urban. Prior to the Industrial Revolution, which began in Britain in the late 1700s, <clears throat> manufacturing was often done in people's homes using hand tools or basic machines. Industrialization marked a shift to powered, special purposes, purpose machinery, factories, and mass production industrial revolution history.com. In 1698, Thomas Savory, an, an engineer and inventor, patented a machine that could effectively draw water from flooded mines using steam pressure. Savory used principles set forth by Dennis Papin, Papin a French-born Br British physicist who invented the pressure cooker. Papin's ideas surround a cylinder and piston steam engine had not previously be, been used to build a working engine. But by 1705, Savary had turned Papin's ideas into a useful invention. So in 1698, Thomas Savary had a patent on a steam engine powered by coal, and this warming influence on the global mean temperature is ca uh, casually ignored by much the much-vaunted IPCC. The IPCC is currently in its sixth assessment cycle. During this cycle, the panel will produce three special reports, a methodology report on nat uh, national greenhouse gas inventories and the sixth assessment report, the 43rd session of the IPCC held in April 2016, agreed that the AR6 synthesis report would be finalized in 2022. <clears throat> no rush. In time for the first UNFCCC global stock take when countries will review progress toward their goal of keeping global warming to well below 2C. Well below 2C. <laughs> what, is, what does that mean, well below? Is that 1.2? Is that 0.9? Is that 1.1? While pursuing efforts to limit it to 1.5C. Um, slap knee here. The three working group contributions to AR6 will be finalized in 2021. So the IPCC plans to reassess the 1.5C and 2C voluntary targets in 2021. Considering we are now an early stage runaway for them to pretend that we will be below 1.5 C temperature increase in 2021 is a monumental dereliction of duty in my humble opinion. Especially now that our oceans have reached carbon saturation. We just talked about that yesterday or the day before. And are now out gassing carbon instead of being carbon sinks. It appears all the heavy lifting that our oceans have been doing has drawn to a close. Uh, from the very good but conservative Christian and Hillary Clinton supporting climate blogger Robert Scribbler. <laughs> Sorry. Temperature averages uh, for 2016 are so far about 1.22 C above the 1951 to two, 1980 baseline. Oh, it's a different baseline. <clears throat> so we're, you know, we're fine. 0. 0.9 if we go with 1980. Point. 1.22 if we go with 1950, and about 1.44 above 1880. Oh, <clears throat> okay then. Scribbler has us in 2016 at 1.44C above the 1880 average, and Thomas Savory et al. has been burning coal since 1698. What happened to that 182 years of emissions? Uh, already, the admittedly, the emissions in the early days of burning coal and later oil were now were low, but ignoring them is is in breach of the precautionary principle. <clears throat> and don't worry, guys, the emissions that we've pumped out into the air for the last two decades, if we stop them tomorrow, they wouldn't cause any rise in temperature. <laughs> We'd stay at one point two, one point two, one point two. Above whatever baseline that is that he was using. I, I have no idea. <clears throat> Are you all confused yet? Because I am. 
Where are we? What baseline? What year are we in? What's the actual temperature? I have no idea. I have no idea. Carol Hikes, I vote for baseline 2025. <laughs> I second that. Here, here. Here, here. All those in favor, say aye. Uh, guys, that's about it for me. I'm out of time. I um, have something very disturbing and angering to talk about <laughs> in, in political news. I'm going to try and do it today if I can. I don't know if I'm going to get to another video today. But yeah, I just read something that made my blood absolutely boil. And I might have to do another video later. I'm not sure what time, um, but I will let you know um, as well that as well as I can. <clears throat> Nasbanaz says, "Can we use the 1420 to 1969 baseline?" <laughs> sure. All right, guys. Thank you for your eyes, your ears, and your conscience. Until next time. Oh, I'll be back tomorrow at the regular time of 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Until next time. Peace.